Hi guys, I'm Andrew and I'm here with Jean-Paul from Bell & Ross to talk about the novelties from the 2019 collection from Bell & Ross. So I think just first off as an introduction, um, can you give us a bit of a brief history around you know, Bell & Ross, you know, why it draws its main inspirations for its very unique design and etc. Okay, so Bell & Ross is a quite a recent brand. It uh, celebrates its 25th anniversary this year. It was founded by two friends and uh, partners. Bruno Bellamich and Carlos Rosillo, uh, who both are a fan of uh, aviation, military as well as civilian aviation, that you can see in the brand identity as well as in the product themselves. Yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, so you know that's all we needed. And so um, to move on to some of the uh, highlights from this year's novelties, so I think you know, one that everyone talks about is obviously the MA1 with the uh, very unique design. And um, can you just give us a brief history of you know where the inspiration comes from? And, you know what you think, where you think it's going to be popular, and why? Okay. So then the aviation world is uh, our inspiration altogether. You were mentioning MA1. Uh, this time, unlike uh, other creation, we are not. Uh, starting from uh, instruments, uh, aviation instruments from the dashboard, but from the, from the clothing of the aviators. Uh, in earlier times, uh, in altitude it was quite cold, so they were using some uh, leather jackets, but quite stiff and also uh, voluminous. And in the late 50s, it turned out that new material, textile material came out, uh, very technical, uh, and at the same time warm enough and much less voluminous. And we find out that it was very interesting, this uh, new development in the clothing of the pilots, uh, to make some inspiration as well as a tribute to this. So the MA1 jacket, this is the name of this new jacket, has a feature that the outside is a khaki color, military, and the inside orange for a very uh, useful and specific reason is for safety. When an incident in uh, flying uh, occurs and the pilot has to eject from the aircraft, uh, then the rescue uh, team should easily spot the pilot to rescue him. So then the jacket would be reversed, worn on the orange side to, for easier uh, spotting. So this was our inspiration. Then the MA1 uh, watch uh, is a khaki color. All the indications are through a sandwich dial in orange color, very bright and as well luminous uh, in dark time. And the strap itself is reversible. One side khaki, the other side orange. It's a, it's a beautiful piece. Um, and so you mentioned earlier about how, you know, this founding was in time instruments, you know, taking aviation from in aviation instruments. And so going back to that, obviously another big hit will potentially be the bi compass. Mm -hmm. And so I want to go through, you know, the inspiration behind that as well. Yeah. Then uh, for this one, we, we went back to the panel, the uh, dashboard of an aircraft or helicopter. We've been doing uh, some uh, uh, tributes to uh, instruments a few years ago in 1930. Uh, tw uh, 2013, 2014, uh, and also there, there was the radar, and this time we took as inspiration the compass. Uh, and on the compass, the color code is greenish blue and uh, beige, which we took for this watch. And uh, we decided to uh, make a separation of the hour and minute indication as clear and as spontaneous as possible. So as you can see uh, on the watch, uh, the R indication are in the center, big numbers and big indexes, and the minutes uh, indication are on the outside, and all, uh, all the numbers also. Huh? So it doesn't mix uh, together. It's uh, clearly separated, not only on the dial itself, but on the uh, hands. We do not use uh, our hands, but a disc on which there is a very noticeable arrow that you can see it, that points directly to the uh, hour track, whereas the minute hand is much longer, obviously, and points to the minute track, so that uh, the uh, differentiation between hour and minute lecture is 
very easy, very comfortable. When they have only to focus on the minutes, they can just uh, forget about the hour uh, index and the uh, dial and focus on it with very precise uh, lecture. And one point that we also wanted to make uh, obvious is the luminosity. Uh, I will make a short demonstration. So all the indications, as you can see, are luminous. So that even in the dark, or for night flight, they have the perfect reading. It's a watch, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's an instrument. Uh, we made it this time, uh, this year, in the uh, ceramic case. Uh, why ceramic? Number one, it's a very uh, hard material, almost unscratchable. Uh, the, when we make a matte finish on ceramic, there's no reflection. Uh, it's very consistent. Uh, so then, what comes out of the watch? Absolutely no reflection, no metal shining only the indication, only what is important, well protected inside uh, this very strong case. Ceramic, as you know, is not that easy to, uh, to produce, to machine, uh, and uh, there are some needs to have oversized parts, for instance the lugs, so that in case of shock, it's strong enough to, to resist uh, in a bad environment. I think just, you know, this one's probably my favorite just because I think it is the epitome of, of, of you know, Baron Ross's signature function drives form. I think it's just, it's just so very apparent in this watch, you know, it's, it's, yeah, like I said, it's probably my favorite. And I think, you know, I think one final thing that uh, caught my eye definitely was your collaboration, this year's collaboration with uh, Renault, yes. which you've done for, you know, the past few years, as I understand. Yeah, so, you know, like, given the fact that you've done a cross, you know, multiple uh, series, you know, from the Vintage, the O3, mm -hmm. to the X1 and the X1 Tourbillon, mm -hmm. you know, how do you keep that consistency in terms of the, the dial, and you keep the same kind of feel across you know, very different yeah. series, very different yes. technologies? Yes, I yeah, what you yeah. mean. It's not easy, huh? you're right to point out this, uh, this fact, though, because there's some consist consistency from 1916 when we start until this year. But at the same time, if you compare all the generations, they are all different. This is simply because each year we decide on a focus point for inspiration. Uh, for instance, last year it was the, the chassis of the car, so there were a lot of work on the, uh, on the case itself. And this year we decided to focus more on the chronometrical functions, uh, so we put a, a big emphasis on, again, the uh, more natural way to use it. Uh, for instance, we introduced a rotating bezel on the round one, on the V3, as well as on the uh, BR03. On the X1 and X1 tourbillon, there's a rotating index, so that for the practice, uh, they can use this index to, to check the remaining time on the practice. And also, the, there's a color code on the hands and on the indication. All what is a chronograph function is in yellow. What is a hour function, so hour and minute, is in orange. The permanent second is green and the date is red. So once you get used to this color code, it's just natural. You just look at what you have to look for timekeeping and that's it. Uh, so code that you can find from one generation to another is on the material. We use as much as possible light material, like titanium, car carbon fiber, uh, and so that's the spirit of, of it. And there's one point also that, that uh, I would like to, to focus, is that since we started with uh, Renault Formula One, uh, we also developed some links between the engineers and the development team at Renault, as well as Bell & Ross. Uh, some of the engineers, engineers sorry, from Renault came to the manufacturer, and there were some discussions on materials, on the, the follow of specific parts, on also how to manage dust in the workshops. So we give them some trips, uh, tips sorry, on what we are experienced, 
uh, white or gray room are very common in the watch industry and we have a very good one. It's not so common for them. So we help them in this regard. They help us in other regard. So there are some exchanges we've been, they came to us. We went to Enstone where they assembled the car. We are going to go to Viry Chatillon where they, they produce the engines. So it's not only uh, they do uh, the cars, we do the watch, but there's a cooperation on that. I feel that's yeah. very important. Yeah, I mean, I just love how you know that backs uh, you know behind the scenes yes. collaboration. I think it just it definitely shows in the final product you produce how you know you've used the Renault colors while still keeping true to again you know, the whole function drive, so many distinct colors on each different part. I think you know it's it's beautiful. It just definitely stays true to Bell and Ross. You know, so you know you've, you've had a definitely a very exciting year in terms of your novelties. You know, without you know spoiling any major hints, do you have any ideas? You know where. Bell & Ross is going to go towards you know, the next few years, you know, what the long-term plan is, you know, expansion, new movements or stuff like that? So we know for sure that we will uh, always be our, our, on our territories. Air is the first one uh, which came, uh, sea and land. Uh, always keep in mind the instrumental uh, aspect of the watches. Then. To, to go more in urban, of course, we'll carry on doing that. How, when, I don't know. <laughs> Frankly speaking, I don't know. Uh, whatever we do, it will always be uh, in the Bell and Ross period and never forget about the users of the watches. The time has to be readable. The use of the watch has to be very easy. The watch has to be strong. Uh, we won't go to extra flat, that's for sure. We won't go to useless complication, <laughs> that's for sure also. Uh, of course, we like uh, uh, technical movement, we like functions. Uh, as you know, we've been developing some tourbillon. We yeah. also have an extra flat uh, automatic tourbillon with a micro rotor. Yeah. We've been doing Sapphire. All those are challenges for us, very interesting. Uh, will carry on like this and it's a fresh I, I started this interview by saying that the Bell & Ross is not very old but if you look at all what Bell & Ross has been doing in only 25 years uh, with this pioneer spirit uh, what is sure is that we are dedicated to keep this pioneer uh, spirit as long as possible. Yeah, I think you know the beauty of Bell and Ross is that despite, like you said, the fact it's not been around, I think it's definitely made a very, very powerful impact. But in terms of design, you know how you guys view watch design, and what you know what should be, and how it should draw inspiration. I think you know there is definitely going to be a lot of interest in the coming years, and I definitely look forward to you know what the future holds for Bell and Ross. So um, you know, thank you very much for your time on behalf of the Horological Society of Bristol and you know all of my viewers out there. You know, I, again, again, thank you for your time, and um, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interest. <laughs> Thank you for your enthusiasm for Bell and & Ross. And keep an eye on us. Yeah, definitely. Thank you.